Franklin Park Conservatory and Botanical Gardens, the gardens are in full color. Walk amidst tropical and native butterflies in flight in the indoor Pacific Island Water Garden. View the conservatory's bonsai collection and experience the exhibition Origami in the Garden. Find details at spconservatory.org. And welcome back to the program. And uh, we've been talking about keeping indoor plants healthy over the winter. And now let's get to the business of light. Okay. Uh, Mark opened up a big old can of worms here. Yes, he did. <laughs> well, in a way. In yes. a good way. It's yeah. a good way. Well, he talked about, uh, you know, how much light he would need to keep his agapanthus and lantana indoors for the winter. And the first question he had was, are there any signs he should be looking for to indicate that the plants need more light? Well, yes, and they're, they're going to need more light, and let's throw into now most homes that don't have a really good humidifier in the furnace are drier than the Sahara Desert. Okay. This is not what agapanthus and so on uh, need. Now, uh, you're taking it into a foreign situation, so you, you have to adjust. You know the light is going to be less. You know it's going to be very dry. That's why the saucer with gravel, so there can be a little bit of evaporation up through the foliage. This is good. Now then, uh, I would expect the lantana to defoliate by as much as 50%. Uh, in other words, let's just say last Saturday he brought it in, and uh, today he takes a look and a few leaves are starting to turn yellow. This is most apt to be the leaves in toward the center of the plant, and uh, by next Saturday they'll be yellow and probably dropping out, and that becomes very alarming. It is the plant adjusting itself to both temperature, light, and etc. cetera. Uh, allow that to happen. Don't, don't panic. Don't put on extra water, because that's exactly what the plant does not need based on its growing conditions. So expect some defoliation. Uh, expect that by March, that plant could be <laughs> what I call bordering on threadbare. Uh, leaves could be few. It'll be probably still alive. He wants to check to make sure there's no mealy bugs and scale on it, etc. But at the same time, uh, just simply know that right then is when you can expect, the, well, the days are already getting longer sunlight-wise, and a growth will start because of warming. The home becomes a little bit more humid, and that's when you can start increasing the water a little bit. And that's when you see some little buds opening. Uh, do not force that because that is, again, you don't want to overwater because you can kill roots when the plant isn't using much water. Uh, too much water literally suffocates roots just the same as if we went into a pool and stayed under. Um, it just takes longer with the plant. So, yeah, expect some defoliation. Dis expect some yellowing. The agapanthus I have not grown, but I've observed them, and they will also yellow. Uh, a good number of what I'll call the outside or what are the, uh, the way it grows up with its strap-like growth, the bottom, uh, bottom leaves, as they will be, can be drying up, and it could be, again, an alarming look. But just let that happen. Uh, keep them moist so that you don't dry the root out, and yet don't try to grow it until at least mid-March. Now, if you pop a light on in the room, is that going to be That's, enough, or do you have to have special lighting for Well, you can plants? go both ways on that, Mark. If you're trying to start seeds uh, in a tray, you, you drop the incandescent lights right down to about six inches above the seedlings. But in a, in a situation like his, um, he can use a light stand, an old-fashioned four-lamp that has a couple of sockets, anything like that, and brighten up the room. Now, it's in this case, because you can't get as bright as the sun by any means, you're going to go with timing. Uh, turn it on when you wake up at 6, give or take the minutes that it takes you to get out of wake bed. Wake up at 6? <laughs> Come on. Right. Well, you're already at work by then, but uh, it's a matter of... Um, going to as much as 16 hours of light a day. Uh, this is true of everything from African violets through the lantana, the, uh, the agapanthus, and, and many other plants. You're, if, if you're trying to grow them and keep them in shape, uh, light will definitely help. It isn't going to cause them to grow, per se, but it will help sustain them because they're getting a chance to make, uh, so to speak, make some food. Um, no fertilization during this uh, middle of winter period. Uh, you, again, you're not trying to grow them, you're trying to keep them alive. Then you can start a little bit of liquid uh, fertilization or water soluble fertilizer uh, starting that mid March period, get them ready to go out by mid May and so on. But um, it, it's a guessing game. Each plant has its needs. I guess so. <laughs> but uh, that, well, let me just add that there are now companies 
offering retail elements where they have grow lights, grow light racks, they have bright lights, dull lights, little bitty standard lights. Um, don't hesitate to visit one of those because if you really want to grow them, you can, under the lighting situation, increase the watering, increase the growth. You could have a lantana blooming during the winter, but you're going to spend a buck <laughs> yeah. because you need some pretty high-intensity lights. So you can go two ways. You can That's either right. really, really uh, intensify the light and water and keep yep. them blooming, or you can just... Keep them alive. Let them survive. That's right. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I've been putting out the squirrel feed. Mm -hmm. It's called bird seed, but the squirrels eat most of it. Uh, All the the birds get in my yard is what (laughs) spills on the ground. Well, and I've I've arranged that the opposite, Mark. Uh, I was having the same problem with a a couple or three, and I'll designate one. I I had a sunny sunflower uh, feeder hanging from a branch with two different wobbly tops on it, and those devils could still come down, hang, learn to balance, (laughs) and they'd drop past and then reach out and grab the feeding ring. All right. I'm getting tired of feeding the squirrels. What to do? Well, I don't know why I didn't do it sooner, but I've had a long, tall cylinder that has the the bird... uh, bird branches at the bottom of the wheel. When anything heavier than a, than a cardinal or blue jay gets on it, they flip down. So I put that where the squirrels could jump or climb down. They have nothing to hang on to to climb down. Yeah. They can't slide down and grab because those prongs will fold down as soon as the weight of a squirrel hits. And you should see the consternation when, <laughs> when they hit the ground. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> You're going to make them all squirrel-proof, and then you're going to sit in your house and say, well, what happened to my three-ring circus? I I enjoyed the squirrels. It's inevitable. You know that I was going to say that. That's right. (laughs) Hey, Fred's to-do list is coming up next. Stick with us. This summer at Franklin Park Conservatory and Botanical Gardens, the gardens are in full color. Walk amidst tropical and native butterflies in flight in the indoor Pacific Island Water Garden. View the conservatory's bonsai collection and experience the exhibition Origami in the Garden. Find details at fpconservatory.org. Well, Mark, it is indeed time to move all the tender plants, like the agapanthus and uh, et cetera, uh, and that's all of them. Anything you want to keep growing, uh, now it will vary around the state as we're being heard, but uh, I have not seen a temperature below 38, and that was just a touchdown, and the things that I was anywhere near concerned about were kind of under an overhang, uh, et cetera. So they didn't, they, they got cold, well well cooled, if we will. Beyond what they like, but they still made it. Now, fertilize the lawn at least, well, soon, and at least one time in the fall, whenever. Yeah, uh, the, definitely the time to do that because uh, it's, it's actually getting kind of late for that, right? It is. Um, although, if they have not fertilized before, it's still uh, oh, well, another couple weeks of time to get the fertilizer on, get some rain or whatever to soak it down through. And then the underground parts will stay at 55 degrees for a while and uh, still pick up that fertilizer. So it'll be helpful. Collect the leaves or chop them up, one or the other. Now, it's also time, even though I don't think anything has frozen yet, but as soon as the skin of water starts to show on bird baths, ponds, well, small ponds and things, be sure to get those uh, dried down, turned over, covered, whatever it may be, because concrete that imbibes water, and when water expands 10 or so percent, when it is, can split some beautiful fixtures. You don't so, want that. Don't no. want that. I saw a $300 urn one time just crack right down the side. Oh, no, that's definitely not something you want. And once again, uh, that's Fred's to-do list for the week. And if you have any questions you'd like to email to us, just send them to fred at planttalkradio.com or give us a call next week on Saturday morning. We'll see you then. Plant Talk is sponsored by Franklin Park Conservatory and Botanical Gardens, fpconservatory.org. If you have a question for Fred for a future show, go to our Facebook page and ask away. We value your comments about the show, so please tell us what you think by writing a review on iTunes. This helps others find out about Plant Talk. You can find out more about Plant Talk on our website at planttalkradio.com.